bees are responsible for one third of all the food on our plate. Understanding how important bees are to our ecosystem, to our agriculture, and also to the food on our plate. Aloha, my name is Leandra, and welcome to the Kona Beekeeper Legacy Project. This started because it's my father's 75th birthday and I am the daughter of Kona beekeepers. And so my dad had mentioned to me that Kona Historical's amazing archives were so thorough, but they were missing queen bee bees or honey bees and beekeeping in Kona, which is such a big part of our agriculture system. And so I thought, I'll just write up a little document and put it in the archives. Well, of course, one thing led to another. We were able to get some funding and it blossomed into a full museum exhibit and an original documentary. Uh, interesting enough, bees were first imported to Hawaii in 1852 by order of the king who was trying to feed his cattle. So if you remember in the history, someone gifted, uh, Captain Vancouver, I believe, gifted the king cattle, right? And the king loved his cattle. Well, they needed something to feed the cattle. So then they imported kiave and haolikoa because the, the beans and the pods of those trees are really rich in protein. Turns out both of those plants need honeybee pollination. So the next thing, they put out a call, $10 to whoever can successfully import honeybees to the Hawaiian Islands. And in 1852, that happened. Honeybees are so important to the larger agricultural ecosystem here in Hawaii, but also to the larger United States and globally for pollination. And what's unique in Kona is that we have of course, amazing weather, which we all know. But in Kona, there's protection from the volcanoes. And that means minimal wind. And minimal wind allows for queens to mate in flight successfully. And so Kona turns out to be this incredible place for raising queen bees um, and um, honey, honey production, because of our large uncultivated crops like kiave and lehua forests that are you know, thick and there's no spray or pesticides on them, so they make amazing organic honey. Honey comes from all over the island. In fact, the Hamakua coast is really known for its amazing eucalyptus honey. Um, Puna has a massive um, beekeeping community, mostly in honey. Um, but something else I really tried to highlight here is that bees are not just about honey. There's so many different value-made products that you can find, ranging from wax to beverages to cosmetics. So it's not just honey, it's not just queens, but there's a wide variety of bee products coming from Hawaii Island. I'm really excited, especially for the keiki coming to the exhibit, that we have a live observation hive. Because for many people, this is the closest they'll get to this many bees ever. So this is an actual beehive made with glass with real live bees living inside. In fact, you can see they're forming honeycomb right here on the glass. They actually fly out the window through this little tube and they come all the way in. They're collecting nectar outside and they're a totally intact colony right here in the exhibit. So you can really get a sense of um, the workings. And there's a queen in here. She has a blue dot on her back. So you can come and find the queen and you can see how the workers take care of her. Bees are our kuleana. Maybe you've heard of colony collapse disorder. This was all over the news in 2016. Well, at that time, 40% of hives were being lost. Today, in 2025, we're having another colony collapse, and beekeepers on the continent are losing up to 70% of their hives. So that means that bees from Kona are more important than ever because it's our queens that repopulate those hives and keep the continental pollination moving and buzzing. So what can we do to support beekeepers in Hawaii? Well, the first thing you can do is buy local honey. It really helps beekeepers. Make sure you're getting stuff. We do sell it at Costco. There's local honey at Costco, but buy it from your local beekeeper. And two, if you have a little bit of land, allow a beekeeper to host their hives on your land. That's actually a much better approach than having your own hive because you let the professionals come in who know how to deal with the pests. Um, and the last one is plant a pollinator garden. You know, any diversity of flowers and plants on your farm is great for pollinators and supports them. And I'll add one more, which is advocate for agriculture in Hawaii. We are a multi-connected agriculture system. So anytime you see a bill related to agriculture, we gotta support each other. 
This is one of my favorite sections. This is the faces of Hawaii Island beekeepers. And although a lot of my research was focused on Kona, I really wanted to highlight the diversity of beekeepers and products that happen all over the island. Something I learned in doing this project is that beekeepers are really innovative. And what one beekeeper is doing might look very different from the other. In fact, they're inventing kind of their own ways of um, and their own tools of doing business. This is a uh, microscope that they use for artificial insemination, known as AI in the industry, although I know that has a different meaning these days. I learned in this process that something that Gus is responsible for, Gus Rouse, my father, um, is breeding a gentler bee in Hawaii. What I learned in my interviews was that in the 70s when Gus arrived in Kona, we primarily had German black bees, which were known for being really aggressive, almost like an Africanized bee. And he began doing artificial insemination. He was one of very few people in the United States doing this, and they brought out experts, and they do artificial insemination to crossbreed different types of bees to make a gentler, stronger, more disease-resistant bee. The most fulfilling part of doing this exhibit for me was gathering the stories of old Kona. You know, not the things I could find in the history books or in my research, but the word of mouth talk story. You know, one talks about an early beekeeper in Kainaliu called Mr. Kobayashi and the mystery of the old honey house down on the coast below Hokulia. There's a really cool Mrs. Toshima story. You can't have a Kona exhibit without a Mrs. Toshima story, but about making a kolehau with honey during the prohibition. And I actually have some incredible tools from these old Kona beekeepers, including a honey extractor that at one time belonged to Ellison Onizuka. Early on, I heard about this honey extractor, and there was rumors that it belonged to the Onizuka family. Well, we had to know more, right? So we started calling everybody, and in the end, I was actually able to talk to Claude Onizuka, who was Ellison's brother. And he told me the story of his uncle, who was a Hulualoa beekeeper, raised honey and shared it with everyone in their neighborhood um, in Keapu Heights. But later, young Ellison Onizuka, our famed astronaut, he took up an interest in beekeeping and he actually used this very honey extractor to do a whole 4-H project as part of his, I think, middle school experience. So we have it here for you to see, as well as the story and everything I learned from the Onizuka family. We've built this incredible exhibit and I want to invite you all to come down and check it out. It's open for the next four months, April through July of 2025. It's totally free to the public. It is open Tuesday through Fridays and there will be several Saturdays, one or two a month that you can come in. So check out Kona Historical's social media to find out what weekend days it's open. I tried to make it interesting to someone who knows nothing about bees to our beekeeping community, and also to our keiki. So everyone is invited. I hope you really enjoy it. This whole thing has been a labor of love for the community, so I'm so excited to share it with you. <laughs>